Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And here's a big one. Today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Bonnie Iver called I, I. All right. Let's try this again. So, Bon Iver, the primary venture for singer, songwriter, producer, Justin Vernon, and a rotating cast of players. And one of the critical darling acts that has never quite won me over. Don't get me wrong, for the most part, I like this project, especially the more propulsive, windswept indie folk side that was instrumental in partially jumpstarting that movement in the late 2000s. But the more Bon Iver has ventured towards synthesized electronic music, the more I've been kind of torn on them, respectful of the ambition, but really rarely ever satisfied with the results. I do think it's a little bit unfortunate that the first time I was talking about Bon Iver, I was covering the project's worst album thus far by a considerable margin, that being 2016's 22 A Million, a project that wrapped itself in a lyrical tangle trying to parse the larger divisive world around it before scolding the audience for trying to understand it, along with some of the most scattershot and fragmented production yet, because you know what, it might have given off a more negative impression. But that also doesn't mean I'm going to mince words here either. Hell, I was probably too nice to 22 a million in retrospect. I really don't quite like that album going back a couple years later. And yet, seemingly out of nowhere, we got a new Bon Iver project, released three weeks early online, and with Justin Vernon describing it as his most honest and adult album to date. Now, what caught my attention was not only more producers that were allowed in the room, but also collaborations with James Blake and Aaron Dessner and even Bruce Hornsby. Now, the latter shouldn't be that much of a surprise, given that he's worked with Justin Justin Vernon in the past, but still, I'm shocked to see him here. And you know what? I really was hoping that this would turn into something special, that they wouldn't win me over proper, that I could be positive on this group, so what did Bony Bear deliver this time? Well, okay, let me start off with the good news. At least to me, this is a notable improvement over 22 a million. Still don't quite think I like it as good as Bon Iver Bon Iver, but it is leaning into the huge swings for shimmering power that gave 22 a million its best moments and marrying them to the more organically inclined grooves that actually kind of worked from that project. And while this album is still fractured and not nearly as groundbreaking as some will make it out to be, the tempering of the experimentation with better structures and more tolerable writing are both promising steps Although I've still got some niggling issues with this project that will prevent me from really embracing it as deeply as I would like. Again, it is good, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and call this great. In fact, you know what? Let's start with the problems and let's focus on Justin Burton himself. I kind of danced around this when I reviewed 22 A Million because the vocal overproduction was the much larger issue, but Justin Burton's creaking, electronically augmented croon can definitely wear on my patience, especially when it's overlayered and mixed right to the front of the mix where the blaring falsetto textures just do not click for me at all, especially on songs like Salem and especially Shadaya, which Otherwise, they have potential, in the former case of the plinking but stable groove, and the latter with that horn section and the really the extended horn interlude, and that's not counting the blurry pile-up of messy, stuttering blending that is Emmy and Gelmore. But the problems in those cases are more linked to the lingering structural issues that you can highlight from 22 a million. Samples of varying fidelities are haphazardly mashed together against underweight clicking drum machines, smatterings of horns and pianos, and a shuddering non structure that is kind of a structure that Arca did better five years ago. But circling back to Justin Vernon himself, what's more exasperating is that when you push away the auto-tune and get away from some of the falsetto, his singing in his multi-track mid-range is probably among some of his best, certainly his most dynamic and immediate, especially when the song has any semblance of structure. The absolute best example is Hey Ma, one of Bon Iver's best songs in years, off the more defined organic leads in the bass of the guitar and some live drums for once but the gradual crescendo of Naeem with the heavier drums, the minor key bridge pivot on Holy Fields, and even some of the jangling piano and harmonic interplay on You Men Like with Bruce Hornsby, it comes across really well. But that's also been a lingering frustration with Bon Iver for some time now, because Justin Vernon is just a good enough composer to refine an organic groove and hit some genuinely pretty or even beautiful
powerful moments, maybe even convince the audience that some of these are not as improvised or assembled piecemeal as they actually are. But then you get the tacked on, overproduced electronics, like the squonking tinny blast through Faith, or how the groove just never stabilizes properly on a Wii, or how despite Rabbi working as a warm, ramshackle guitar send-off, it feels like the wrong sort of ending for the album. And then you realize just how fragmented and undercooked some of these compositions can feel. It's just slapdash overall, and just overarranged enough to try and disguise it, but when placed in contrast with songs here with an actual climax that can make that beauty shine through effectively, it reflects a lack of deeper thought and refinement. It, just in contrast, it's really uneven. And on that note, the lyrics. Now, I'll repeat the same stipulation I said when I reviewed Bon Iver last time, that Justin Vernon apparently writes lyrics more based upon feel and flow rather than making direct sense. So more often than not, you're dealing with an impressionistic interpretation rather than something more direct. Okay, fine. But that being said, if there is a project where Justin Vernon is writing some of the most direct and political pieces of his entire career, it's on this album. And I'm a little bit shocked how little discourse seems to have actually covered it. Now, Justin Vernon has been framing this as the conclusion of a seasonal cycle, starting with his first album, with this being the autumn album. You start with winter, then you get spring, summer, and now fall. But the larger thematic element here, more with more focus, is the passage of time, and the contrast being presented between those who necessarily must evolve and change, and those who would look to and then settle in the past. You know, make America great again, or some nonsense like that. And don't think I'm kidding about the political references, because as early as we, Justin Vernon is targeting the small-minded bullies who have never grown up and can't see that larger picture, who will defend tariffs and despite being sold a bill of goods, even despite being cast aside. And it continues on to Hollyfields and Gelmore, both songs that highlight the impacts of climate change change and the continued blindness of people to acknowledge the very real calamity that is at hand. It's right in their doorstep. Hell, You Man Like might be the most blunt shot on the entire album, highlighting the systemic rot of an opioid-addled Midwest, from which Justin Vernon comes from, the phallic repetition of the liar-in-chief, and his utter failure to take any sort of responsibility, despite that being in all the values that he professes. And then we get Hey Ma, where there are glimpses of a petulant past and a lingering trail of projection where Justin Vernon was just as stuck in that past, but then finds the truth in the night's passage to a real dawn, with enough hope implied that the person's been back and forth from the light, so there is ultimately some optimism. That's powerful. There's some evocative writing here, and even signs of growth as he throws his faith in the tangible on, well, faith, while questioning the hypocrisy of those who refuse their time to give to others and shy away from that empathy on Shadaya. And then, just like on the last, album, Justin Vernon seems to steer into a skid with a lingering petulance and a retreat that all the self-awareness in the world can't redeem. And really, I'm not the only one who's noticed this. Other critics who have been much harsher on this album has identified how much he wants to shrink away from the leadership role or a spotlight, and have hammered this album as a result for going so big but not backing it up. Which I'm not really sure is fair, but I kind of get it. Now, part of this ties into how Justin Vernon always has lyrics that yank back from any real responsibility in himself and Ring is a little bit hypocritical, an irony that is tellingly ignored, and can just seem a little bit insufferable even in context. If forgiveness is a chore, what are you waiting for on Emmy? Or how he's not really received reciprocity on Salem, just really the majority of that song to be honest. But it's more an acknowledgement on cuts like Naeem that time is leaving him and his partner behind as much as anyone, and perhaps the leadership role is passing him by in favor of the kids who will be hell-bent on chasing change and fixing things. And on some level, I get it, that's the right answer. But if you yourself acknowledge that the peace and stability your privilege gives you is now anodyne and sterile, as he says in the last psalm, and yet that is the moment you choose to settle into, along with pushing the same sort of sanitized peace, love, and come together message that might have its heart in the right place but seems divorced from any sense of real urgency or reality, just feels like a cop-out and a similar self-focused abdication of responsibility. He gives me the same feeling of how Gen X has really sat out the generational divide 
divide between the boomers and the millennials, unwilling to realize that through even well-meaning detachment, they're just as much of a bulwark against real and needed change. Might be a reason why on Bon Iver's most conscious and directly political project, there's no serious call to action, the album ends on a sedate guitar ballad that Justin Vernon himself has described as a lightweight See You Later song, allowing time's passage, or even how the album's titled I, I, an album that wants to target ego, but will never really dismantle its own. And I'll be honest, while I do think that's an improvement, there's a lot that holds me back from really liking this album. Yeah, the organic compositions connect a little better, and there's some great layered poetry here. I appreciate how high he's shooting Justin Vernon is. But at the end of the day, between my persistent issues with the project as a whole, and how it can't quite stick the landing in production and themes, yeah, I can't believe I'm gonna say it, but a very strong 6 out of 10, and a recommendation most for the fans, but even then I'm still not quite sold. I've long considered Bon Iver as one of the most overhyped indie acts where the experimentation, the writing, and the delivery was never quite as potent as it might seem. And I get the feeling that with time's continued passage, we'll only see more of that just to come to pass. If you're curious though, it is a fascinating listen. It's ambitious. I do respect how high this album might be shooting. And for closing off its arc, I do respect it. But for me, I'm not ready to fade into that autumn sunset just yet. And if we're being honest, Justin Vernon shouldn't be ready either. Just saying. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I imagine like with the last Bonnie Bear review, this is bound to be contentious, but folks, this should connect better than it is. It just feels way too fragmented and improvised at points, and thematically, you dig into the lyrics, it is their most direct in a long time, and it's kind of hard to avoid some of the issues. Just saying. But if you want to buy or stream it, link's down there in the description below. And I got the poll up there for you all to tell me how wrong I am. Looking forward to it. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you're looking for that next episode of Billboard Breakdown that's dropping, I think, tomorrow, or maybe Wednesday, it might be tricky depending on what happens next, it's in the second channel right over there. Just a quick reminder to you all, I am going on vacation after this review, so if the reviews look a little bit more handheld and scattershot, or I might be bundling a couple of albums together, that is the reason why. I truly hope you guys are going to watch those along the way. They might be a little bit more sporadic when it comes to my regular schedule, but hey, if you want to see my schedule, check my Instagram. I post it semi-regularly. But till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.